Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video today, we're going to talk about ostomy. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and then check out ninjanerd.org. That's where we have all of our lecture illustrations and notes for you guys to check out for every lecture that we put up here on YouTube. And let's get into it when we talk about ostomy. So what ostomy is, is ostomy is an artificial surgical created opening, meaning that we have um, no opening in this area and we are going to create one in order to help out our body. And when we do this, we are typically taking either our colon to create a colostomy, our ilio ilium to take an ileostomy. And when we do create this opening, that's a loud marker, when we do create this opening, we will then have a stoma, right? So a stoma is what we will see when we have an ostomy. And you may have heard of stomas before, which is basically, if you picture, cutting into the stomach and taking the lining of our colon and attaching it to the skin so that it kind of envelopes and turns out on itself a little bit on top of the skin. So as it lays there, it creates like this little button and it has like a little hole in the middle and it's usually pink and shiny that what you would imagine the inside of your intestines would look like. So some patients will have a colostomy, which is their colon. It's turned out some people will have an ileostomy, which is the ileum, turned out, which is our sm part of our small intestine. And this is in order to help them eliminate, essentially. So the patient possibly has some issue where stool is not going through, and it's not properly going through, coming out of, coming through the rectum. And because of that, we need to create an exit point of, through the body in order for the stool to come out. So we want to think about basic anatomy here, and we want to think about how the body works, right? So when we eat, we eat some food, right? It goes into our mouth. It goes down through our esophagus into our stomach. From our stomach, it's gonna go into our small intestine, into our large intestine, and eventually, our rectum and then become eliminated, correct? So very simplified path here of how food enters and exits the body. And somewhere along the way here, there's typically some issues that these patients will have in order to stop food. Food might not pass through. So on the stomach side, or on the colon side, we have a bunch of different places for the colostomy to be placed, right? So we have this area here, which is our ascending colon. As you can see, it's going up or it's ascending. So this is our ascending colon. And then we have this here, which is called our transverse colon. It's transversing across. Food then comes and flows down into our descending colon. We have a little portion here called our sigmoid colon, and then our rectum. And you picture a stoma. If you're looking at a patient's belly, right? You're looking and assessing their abdomen. They have a belly button, and then they have these four different quadrants. And these four different quadrants are where you may see different colostomies, right? So if we look at this patient and we see a colostomy here, right, then we can think, okay, this patient probably has an ascending colostomy. Up here, if we see it on their abdomen, this could be a transverse. You look over here, this could be a descending. Real down low on the left lower quadrant could be our sigmoid. And then up here, a little smaller one could be our ileostomy. And the purpose of this is why. Why does our patient have possibly one of these stomas? They typically don't have two. They could have one that is a dual one where there's two right next to each other. But patient will typically have a stoma, right? So that you walk in, this patient has a stoma over here, this one right here, this ascending colon. The purpose of this and why that is placed there is because the patient may have some type of blockage, right? But it's in order to help them eliminate, right? To pass stool. That's the purpose of really, once we eat something, we want it to come back out. So if they're having trouble with elimination or they're having irritation within the colon or um, large intestine or small intestine, we wanna think about what are those causes. So think in your head right now, what are some issues that patients may have, let's do blue, uh, that would cause them to maybe possibly want a colostomy or need a colostomy. So one of those could be Crohn's, P. 
patient has a lot of issues with it. And what's the other thing that's similar to Crohn's that we usually talk about? We have ulcerative colitis. The patients that have this, what's another cause that they can have is Dever Ticulitis or losis. They could just have a really bad infection. Ischemia of the bowel. And those can go along with things like cancer. They could have a bowel blockage. So they had previous surgeries before and now they have a bowel obstruction or a bowel blockage. So if you want to think about all of these causes, what is going on? Well, essentially food's going in and maybe it's getting stuck or it's irritating the bowel so badly that it's not able to um, absorb, right, what it needs to absorb. Because remember, the purpose of our colon is in order to absorb nutrients and fluid out of the food that we just ate in order to bring that back into the body and get rid of the things we don't want to use. So when we have the stoma, we want to start thinking about how we can assess this, right? And we want to think about what should be in the colostomy bag. So when the patient does have the ostomy, they have the stoma, and then we have this whole nice bagging system that we can put around the stoma in order to collect the feces so that we are able to, you know, not have it go all over the place and there's some way, because we have no sphincter control over our stoma. Once our stoma is there, it's basically an exiting point. So it will conti continually kind of drain, and what we need to do is collect it. And when we collect it, we want to assess the skin around, and we also want to assess the contents. So let's think about that for a second. When we have a patient who has possibly an ileostomy, so remember we went from the mouth, right? We chew something up, it goes into the stomach, it gets broken down by all those gastric acids and juices, and it goes into the small intestine. It's pretty like sludgy and watery at that point. So you wanna start thinking about what is gonna come out of the ileostomy. The ileostomy is gonna be mostly this like darker green, watery, fluid, right? It's going to be loose. It's going to be able to you know, not have many chunks. And what we're looking at here is this liquid. But as it goes now into our colon and it starts to produce or push through our colon, it starts to absorb that fluid, right? So if you think about here at this point, as we go around our abdomen and assess when we're listening and auscultating for those sounds, we are listening to see what kind of digestion is occurring or absorption is occurring, right? And if we're absorbing a lot of fluid here, as we're absorbing out fluid, it should be less and less fluid-like and more and more solid as we get to our rectum. So if you think right here, this is gonna be dark green, it's gonna be liquid. Right here in the ascending colon, it, it's probably still gonna be liquid-like, maybe a little firmer. As we get up here, we might start to see some small soft formed stool with some liquid. Here we're gonna start getting into the partially formed in our descending to basically completely formed here. And then what is then going to be our normal type of bowel movement, right? Our normal type of waste products. So now we've already talked about how we can assess what's in the bag. Let's talk into also talking to our patient and assessing the stoma because that's the most important part is a patient's gonna go, pos uh, go into surgery and come out with something that they've never possibly seen before. And some of these patients don't even know this is happening. There may be some type of trauma or whatever and all of a sudden they, they come to a couple days later and they have this on them and it's gonna be you at the bedside teaching them about it and teaching the family about it and trying to talk to them through it. So let's talk about how we're gonna assess the stoma and then also the nursing care for our patient. All right, nurse nerds, so now we're gonna talk about the assessment of the stoma. So when we have a patient that has a stoma, there are some things that we wanna look out for on the NCLEX as well as for our patient, right? So first, when the stoma is created, we wanna think about, again, what it looks like. So we are taking the in inside, whether it's our large intestine or small intestine, and turning it, flipping it out on itself. So immediately in my head, I start thinking of something that is about shiny, and it's usually red in the beginning, and it's usually pretty swollen, All right? And then as it starts to heal post-surgery, it will eventually 
fade into a nice healthy pink, right? So it's still going to be shiny, but now it's going to be healthy looking, I say healthy pink, meaning it's not a pale pink, it's a nice pink that looks like it's getting perfusion, right? And this is important because we want to make sure that the stoma is getting the perfusion it needs. It is still part of a living organ. We don't want the patient to have to go through and get another stoma. So what we're looking at here is keeping the stoma nice and healthy, meaning it's going to be this nice, vi vibrant pink, almost sometimes red, but not too beefy red. So what are we going to be looking out for then? We're going to be looking out for signs of decreased circulation. So what are some signs that maybe we should be assessing or telling our, our patient, hey, you should go to your doctor if you start noticing this. If it's black, that's a bad sign. That already means it's, it's already maybe too far gone and we're possibly going to have to create a new one. But also, if it's really beefy red, meaning it's looking red, either the stoma's really red or right around it as well as getting really red and irritated, these are signs that maybe there is uh, compromised circulation, there might be some type of infection as well going on, so we want to make sure that we are telling our patient about the stoma uh, assessment and they're able to keep an eye on it. After the stoma assessment, we also, like we talked about before, want to think about the drainage assessment. So we want to make sure that the drainage, depending upon, that's oh, the loud marker again, depending upon on the location. Meaning if we have an ileostomy, that's gonna be our dark green, but if we have something that's in our descending colon, it's gonna be closer to looking like normal fecal material, okay? And there's one other thing we need to also teach our patient about assessment. Besides our normal ab abdomen assessment, like listening and assessing and looking, so look, listen, and feeling, you know, checking out our abdomen as we need to, we also want to think about the skin around the stoma. God, all these markers are loud today. Let's do this color. Here, we'll do this color. Oh, they're all loud. Just skin, right? So when we talk about the skin around the stoma, it's really important because, again, when we put on this drainage material, which is something you may learn in your nursing labs or you can see online somewhere, we are able to cut this little uh, wafer that goes around the stoma and sits nicely around the stoma. And we only want that to be about an eighth of an inch bigger. And that's to create that nice barrier between the stoma and the skin because the skin is very sensitive to all of those gastric juices and byproducts that might be coming out of the stoma. And because of that, it's gonna create possibly some skin breakdown or irritation. So we wanna check the skin around the stoma for any irritation, any breakdown, and possibly think about a skin barrier. Meaning we have some barriers that we can put there in order to protect that skin. Because think about the patient. If that skin is becoming very irritated, they are going to be less likely to want to possibly change um, their stoma or their baggage and drainage system out. And if they're doing that, they're gonna have more issues down the line because there could be more breakdown. So we need to teach and assess them about what are we looking for for those irritation for that breakdown. Is it red? Is it flaking? Is it looking angry? Is it looking a lot shinier and it's having issues that we maybe need some skin barrier put on there? So with our nursing care, we want to start teaching our patients one about all those assessments and telling them how to put skin barrier on. We also want to teach them about the drainage system. So one of the things usually is to empty, right? They want to empty it when it's about a third to about a halfway full, okay? Meaning we don't want the bag too full because then we could have some type of perforation occur. But we don't want to be changing it every five seconds as everything comes out. So you want to teach them about emptying it about a third to halfway full. They can do it right into the toilet. Then we also want to talk to them about burping the bag if they need to burp the bag, meaning to let out some gas. So sometimes depending on the food that we eat, which could be things like broccoli or beans, 
cauliflower, things that they maybe want to step away from a little bit or avoid and don't eat them every day, they can create more gas. And that more gas will create, you know, basic, basically a little like balloon, a little bubble in that bag. So the patient can burp the bag. So teaching them how to do that without making a mess, teaching them how to uh, pull back some of the, the colostomy bag in order to expel the air and then able to clip it back on. And when you have a patient like this, you want to, that are new to the system, you want to kind of walk them through it and teach them through it and be at the bedside and see them do it because that's going to make them more comfortable when they're at home. If you're doing everything for them when they have this and then they go home, they may not know how to do it. They may be scared and then they may not want to do it. And then they're going to run into issues where the bag's getting too full. They're having issues with it adhering. They're having irritation of the skin. So we want them to empty the bag when it's about a third to a halfway full. We also wanted them to learn how to burp the bag. We also want the patient to change their whole system, usually every three to five days. So hopefully they're able to do that. And we want them to cut that wafer about an eighth of an inch bigger. So we want it to be snug enough where it's able to protect that skin underneath. And depending on the type of um, system they have, they're going to possibly have some type of measuring device. So you want to think about that as well. And then the last thing is that they're, if they're having any type of change, right? So if they're having some type of change within the drainage, we want them to be able to notify their PCP. And then the last thing is any type of medications. Depending on the type of ostomy they have, they want to maybe talk to their provider about over-the-counter medications and certain medications that they're on because they can cause some irritations and problems as well because some of those medications do have to make it to the intestine in order to be absorbed. So I hope this made sense, Ninja Nerds. I hope you learned something about ostomies. And as always, until next time. Mm -hmm.